In this video, we'll look at graphs of inverse functions and how those graphs relate to the original function. Let's just remind us what the inverse of a function does. Remember, the inverse swaps the inputs and the outputs. So any ordered pair x, y in the original function becomes the ordered pair y, x in the inverse of that function. So let's look at the fun function f of x equals square root of x, and we'll find its inverse, and then we'll graph both on the same set of axes. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is find the inverse of f of x equals the square root of x. Remember the f of x notation is the same as y, so we'll replace that, and then switch the x and y variables, and finally solve for y. So in this case, to solve for y, we're squaring both sides, we get f inverse of x is equal to the square root of x. Or, excuse me, this x squared. All right, so now let's take a look at a table of values to see uh, what points we should plot to graph each of these functions. Let's first look at the original function, f of x equals square root of x. I'm choosing uh, some values for x that are perfect squares, 0, which gives me square root of 0, 1, which has square root of 1, 4, which has square root of 2, and 9, which has square root of 3. The domain of this function is x is greater than or equal to 0 because I'm looking at the square root and I can't plug in any negative values. Because of that, the range is also uh, y values that are greater than or equal to 0. And that should say a greater than, it's just a little cut off there. All right, now to form the inverse of that function, we can just switch the ordered pairs. So I'll make a table of values again. And just switching 0, 0, 1, 1, which happens to be the same. The next two ordered pairs, 2, 4, and 3, 9. Now notice because I've gotten this function from the inverse, I am only using a positive or 0 for x values. So x here is greater than or equal to 0 is my domain. Uh, likewise, my range, I will still only get out non-negative values, so y is also greater than or equal to 0. Even though I'm used to this function x squared as being having a domain of all reals, remember it came from the inverse, so the domain is restricted. All right, let's go ahead and graph these two functions. I'm focusing on the first quadrant because of my domain and range for each. And I'm just going to go out to 5 on either axis. So I'll just plot the um, values that will fit. Okay, so my values for square root of x, I have 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. And I already know the shape of this graph anyway, because this is one of the functions that we have in our family of functions, so we should know the shape. There's my f of x. Now graph f inverse. Again, I'm plotting 0, 0. 1, 1, and now 2, 4. And once again, I do know the shape of this graph because it is uh, x squared. I'm only drawing the right-hand side of this parabola. All right, so there's my graph, f inverse of x. Just move this down slightly. There we go. All right, so now if I look at this graph, I see that it, there seems to be some sort of reflection. And if I draw this line that passes through the point 0, 0, and 1, 1, I will get a line over which f of x is reflected to get f inverse of x. And if I were to use these two points, 0, 0, and 1, 1, I can find the equation of that line, and I would find that the equation is y equals x. Okay go back here. Okay, so graphically speaking, in order to obtain the graph of the inverse of a function, we can just reflect all of the points of the original function over the line y equals x. And again, when I'm doing that, all I'm doing is just swapping the x and y values. Alright, let's take a look at one more example. Uh, so here I have a function 
uh, this is a, a piecewise function. The ordered pairs are given here. I have negative 5, 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 5, and 1, 7. And we're going to, and this should be connected here, it's just a little, hasn't really shown up well on the computer. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, graph the inverse of this function just by swapping the x and y values, which is really a reflection of the line y equals x. So notice I have no idea what the equation for this function is, but I could automatically find the graph of its inverse. All right, to find f inverse of x, I'm just going to swap these ordered pairs. So I have negative 1, negative 5, 0, 2, a negative 2, 5, 0, and 7, 1. And I'll go ahead and plot those on my graph here. So I have negative 1, negative 5, 0, negative 2, 5, 0, and 7, 1. Now, since I drew this uh, coordinate plane by hand, my scale might be a little bit off, but I can see that this function, when I connect uh, the points with line segments, I do get a reflection over the line y equals x. And I'll just go ahead and draw that line in as a dotted line just to emphasize that. So once again, we're thinking of the line y equals x as the mirror, and f of x and f inverse are mirror images about that line. All right, the next thing we're going to do is talk about domain and range. And we saw that the domain and range um, was related to both the original function and the inverse of the function. They actually swap roles. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this function here, which is a rational function, f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 5. We're going to find the domain and range of both the original function and its inverse. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is find the inverse of f of x, this rational function. So I'm just writing out the original function here, and then I will interchange f of x with uh, the notation y. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me talk about the domain for this, because that's important. Uh, so here the denominator cannot be 0, so we're looking at x values. As long as x is not equal to 5, we are good to go. And again, if you think of the graph, there would be a vertical asymptote at x equals 5. Now for the range, we're looking at the y values. We can think about the horizontal asymptote here. Uh, we see the degrees are the same, uh, so we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And looking at the graph, we would see that this particular function never crosses over that asymptote. So the range is all values of y except for 1. All right, now let's go ahead and find the inverse. So I'm just replacing the f of x notation with y, and now I'm swapping x and y. Now I will just go ahead and solve for y by cross-multiplying. Distribute the x to open up those parentheses. And I'm going to collect the y terms on the uh, left side of this equation and all of the other terms on the right-hand side. So I'll add 5x to both sides and subtract y from both sides. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and factor the y out of the left-hand side, and divide both sides by x minus 1. So now I have y equals 2 plus 5x, divided by x minus 1. I will replace that with my uh, f inverse notation. And I now have the inverse of the given function. Then I'll take a look at the, the domain and the range of the inverse. So here for the domain, I don't want x to be equal to 1, because that will make the denominator 0. So my domain, x is not equal to 1. 
But for the range, again, we can think about the horizontal asymptote here would be y equals 5. And if we were to graph it, we would see that this function does not cross that y asymptote. So the range are all values except for 5. Let me just go back there for one second. Okay, here, so if I compare the domain and the range for the original function and the inverse of that function, I see that the domain and range just switch roles. The domain of the original, x is not equal to 5. The range of the inverse, y is not equal to 5. Here, the range of the original functions, y is not equal to 1, and the domain for the inverse is x is not equal to 1. So it appears that the domain and range just uh, flip-flop from the function to its inverse. And this seems to make sense for us because we know that the inverse just switches the roles of the inputs and the outputs. So of course the domain is a set of all inputs and the range is a set of all outputs. So that seems uh, reasonable. Alright, so that's just described here. Uh, so if we have a one-to-one -one function with domain A and range B, the inverse of that function has domain B and range A. And again, they just switch roles. All right, so now let's take a look at the uh, composition of inverse functions. If we compose two inverse functions in either direction, the result is always x. And again, I want you to think the inverse undoes whatever the function does. So if you start out with an input, the function will manipulate it in some way. The inverse is going to undo all of those manipulations and bring you right back to your input, which is x. Uh, so here we're taking a look at two functions that we just uh, found the inverse of in the last example, and we're going to just show that they are inverses by composing them in both directions. So we'll find f inverse of f and f of f inverse. Alright, so now we have our two functions, f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 5 and f inverse of x equals 5x plus 2 over x minus 1. Alright, so first let's compose f of f inverse. Remember you could always rewrite this in alternate notation to help you remember which function is being uh, plugged into which the other. Uh, so here I'm taking f inverse and I'm plugging it in for f. So everywhere in f where I see an x, I'm going to substitute the entire function of 5x plus 2 over x minus 1. So that looks like the following. So there's my input. I'm adding 2 in the numerator and then taking my input and then taking 5 away from it in the denominator. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply uh, the top and bottom of this expression by the common denominator, which is x minus 1. And this is just to simplify this expression so I don't have a complex fraction. And when I do that, I have 5x plus 2 plus 2 times x minus 1. Over 5x plus 2 minus 5 times x minus 1. And again, when I simplify that, or I'll first distribute, distribute in the denominator as well. And when I simplify this, I am left with uh, 7x over x, or 7x over 7, which is equal to x. All right, in the interest of time, I just fast forwarded a little bit here. Um, so now we're finding f inverse of f of x. And we'll see that the simplification is done in a similar way, but here we're plugging in x plus 2 over x minus 5 into our inverse function, multiply by the common denominator. We're simplifying in the same way, so I urge you to pause this and just take a look at what's happening. We see that once we simplify, we again get x, which means that f inverse of f of x equals x. So since we have the composition done in both ways, we have 
both of them equal to x, we know that they are truly inverses.